Now the next category of effects are timing effects. And this is a whole new category. We're now talking about things like slow motion, fast motion, making a freeze frame, doing a ramp speed or an instant replay. These are all controlled in the toolbar here. You get a little pop-up, and this has access to all of your timing effects, slow motion, fast motion, and so forth. And we'll walk through a bunch of these now. So there's another way you can also access them in the Modify menu. If you click on the Modify menu and then go to Retime, you see the exact same set of controls. So this is just a duplicate. The Retime submenu in the Modify menu is exactly the same as the Retime pop-up in the toolbar. And so this is just two different ways to get to those same things. And you'll see as we get into it, you can also right-click on the clip to get to those things as well. Let's start with some basic slow motion. So we've got a shot here. Let's just go to where we're running here. Let's he sees the joggers, then he decides to start running himself. And let's say we want to... All right, let's take this shot here. Let's say we want to make this shot a slow motion shot. Select the clip. Click on the retime pop-up and choose slow. And you can choose from three presets, 50%, 25%, and 10%. I'm going to go to 50%. And you see the first thing that happens is going to make my, my clip twice as long. Because by definition, if you have the same number of frames, but you're playing them at half the speed, that means it's going to take twice as long. And now when we play... The clip is playing at at 50 percent. Now you may notice that it is a little bit, you know, a stuttery. And there are three different ways you can control how slow motion is applied. And those that's by going into that same retime menu and setting video quality. By default, there's normal frame blending and optical flow. I don't know why we call this normal because you almost never are going to want to use normal. Frame blending is a much better choice, which is basically going to create little cross dissolves in between the frames to create interim frames. And so you see now the those in between frames are going to be a lot smoother. And let's give it a second to render. And nice and quick, it renders through. And now when I play it, you can still tell it's an effect to some degree, but it's a lot smoother when you use that. Uh, the frame blending. Alternatively, you can go to the high, the highest quality option, which is optical flow, which is actually going to analyze the clip and do a optical flow analysis to determine what are the vectors of movement within the frame. And so here it is with the optical flow. And so you can see both the good and the bad of that because, you know, first of all, it's definitely much smoother, right? That if you compare the movement. But it's also got a little bit of a surreal effect. You see, as it sort of, as some of those like leaves and flowers get distorted, like especially as he crosses this, see how like there's weird distortion in the flowers behind him. This is the downside of optical flow. Uh, you know, the main movement is so much smoother than if we go back and uh, just, just, we can toggle between now that it's been rendered. We can switch here's frame blending. <clears throat> Right, and here's optical flow. Right, much, much smoother in most of the cases, but there's a couple moments where weird little distortion happens, and, and that's sort of just the nature of optical flow. So it works for some cases, and it doesn't work for others. You kind of have to choose and experiment with uh, the case specific to your footage.